still are joining, better to join all of them before we start this uh, class on uh, orthodontics. So you know that uh, the number of questions in orthodontics may be around uh, 16 questions. These questions in orthodontics are very straightforward. One of the scoring subjects in uh, NEET, or I to say in any type of uh, entrance examination is orthodontics, straightforward questions, very easy. And they are all fact-based questions. That means if you know the answer, you can answer it directly. You cannot make a guess, but you can take a chance to guess, but it is a do and die. So I always say is don't lose the marks in uh, orthodontic subject. It is a very straight subject, of course, and it is a mix of, I always say what is called as uh, cumulative reading, cumulative reading or incremental reading. That means each, each clinical subject, if you see in our dentistry is associated with uh, some preclinical subjects. So likewise, in orthodontics, ours is related to the oral anatomy and oral histology, where we'll study about the sequence, the eruption of the tooth and oral pathology, the number, size, disruption of uh, the mechanism that cause changes in the dentition, which, which is nothing but the local etiological factors. Likewise, the pedodontic part, the interceptive orthodontics. And these are combined together makes the orthodontics subject. Orthodontic subject, we have the questions of the 16 questions, four questions will be from the diagnosis part. And four questions will be from the appliances or mechanics part. And of this, nowadays, if we see for the last six years, there are nearly 20 questions, 16 to 20 questions in between coming from in each entrance. That means almost uh, five to 7%, which carry about uh, 80, 80 percent or 80 marks in an entrance of 720 are from orthodontics. So one of the things is uh, some way we take very light during our uh, the BDS curriculum, the orthodontic subject. And of course, it is very easy to pass in orthodontics only. And it is very easy to understand if you know the concepts in orthodontics. So I am not going into details on that. Now, we are going to discuss the image-based questions that are given in uh, different entrances. What can be expected uh, from the questions which are given, which were given already, and which can be given in future uh, entrances? That is, in 2023, the nearest examination which you are going to take. Uh, I think most of them have come. A very good number, around 250 members, and. Picture-based questions in uh, orthodontics. Still sending messages to admit. Is the screen visible to you? I started sharing the screen again. Is it visible? Yes. Thank you. And we'll start from uh, basic things that can be asked in uh, Examination. So this is the one of the questions. Uh, I don't know why the ugly ducting stage uh, is very fond for uh, examiners. Uh, this 
any question regarding the ugly ducting stage is given showing midline diastema and the primary canines and asking them at what age it is uh, sealed and what is the treatment of this kind uh, of uh, malocclusion that is found around nine years and of course how do you treat this condition how do you close the midline diastema in a nine year old child these are some of the questions that are given in uh, previous uh, entrances so it is very easy to recognize the this midline diastema along with the primary incidar that is specifically they will give the point nine years of age so why this is uh, occurs and this is occurs due during eruption of the canines the permanent canines that question is also given that uh, somebody is mute all please mute your yes this this is due to the eruption of the canine the permanent canine during the permanent canine eruption when it is in the alveolar bone it exerts its force on the roots roots of the lateral incisors so what happens these lateral incisors the crowns becomes flared as the canines get down they start touching the lateral incisors crown portion now again the lateral incisors were get mesialized this is one of the very fondful question for examiners so don't lose and some of the times you will observe the deep bite deep bite which is a transitional during the fixed dentition stage during the ugly duckling stage and uh, what is the mechanism this is called many of you may be knowing this what is this mechanism you can chart no problem yes it no treatment there is no treatment for uh, ugly duckling stage you have to wait and watch till the yes this is vaccinator mechanism very easy question uh, this and uh, in examination they have been students who have went wrong to understand uh, what is being given here this is vaccinator mechanism nothing but and the vaccinator mechanism is made up of how many muscles this is also one of the question previously given yes 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 it is three muscles the labia oralis and the vaccinator muscle and the last one the tergo mandibular mechanism and to be reconstructed of course it won't come and uh if you take all india pg entrance around 18 to 20 some of the questions are particularly given on the type of forces being examinated which force is more either labial force if labial force is it the upper or is it the lower how will be the tongue pressure on the outward thrust of the tongue pressure compared to the upper part that is in the maxilla and in the mandible also you can see few questions given on that also so can you identify so they have given this this question they have asked they can ask at any point of uh, time they will show and you ask you what are the pressures exerted by the tongue on the upper lip and what is the lip pressure upper lip pressure and the lower lip pressure what is the tongue pressure exerted on the the upper dentition and the lower dentition also this is one it is given in 2000 18 sorry i may be taking a little bit of chance in between admitting the students still they are uh, joining at the bridge so this is a direct pick up from uh, profit book if you see that the forces exerted by the both the upper lip and lower lip are the same are the same but the pressure exerted by the tongue is more on the lower dentition remember this point it is more on the lower point it is less on the upper dentition so this question was once given of course they have given this below 5 grams of force and they have given where the forces are less they have given a b c d of course if we can see that the tongue pressure on the upper dentition is very less
and a uh, few questions which we can see nowadays from the you know this what is this this is your ackerman profit classification nothing but your uh, what is called as uh, venn diagram and they can you ask you a question there are nine you know this is a nine rounds or uh, in ackerman's profit classification usually it is five parameters but one is universal among all of them there are what is called as 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 9 this is the ninth one what are this 1 and 9 represents where is the universal in ackerman's profit classification what is that universal to all the mole occlusions yes where it will be it is alignment it will be 1 or 9 yes 1 alignment this this for so it is the and this is the ackerman profit classification the intra arch alignment whether it is universal whether all the mole occlusions they exist whether a crowding or spacing so you have to mark this as one and ninth is the worst of all the conditions so it has what is called it as transverse sagittal vertical all mole occlusions will be there so next we will moving to another question which is closely related to this venn diagram or ackerman profit classification which was the recently modified by the profit uh, this is nothing but so you can see that so you know what is a cant of occlusion if you see the previous 2 3 years papers they are asking about the cant of occlusion in different directions different dimensions we have what is called as the sagittal direction or anterior posterior and the vertical direction of course we have what is called as transverse direction in this transverse direction what is the cant that relates the transverse and sagittal plane called or, or you can find a question like this any of this portion they can give a question what is that that is related to transverse and vertical what is that that is related to the sagittal and vertical you know what is cant of occlusion we are going to discuss what is ya what is roll and what is pitch you should know it so okay one 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 you have answered here yeah, so many of answered you have one what is two and three there are so many options here what is two and what is three what is three yes very nice so you are very well prepared for uh, neat exam yes 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 exactly correct the one is ya yeah. another is the roll and the three is the pitch so i ask my students to remember like this the first word of uh, ya is yawning yawning that means widely opening the mouth when you yawn you open the mouth so i ask them to remember you see the ya when the mouth is opening whether there is shift in the transverse can you see this is shift occurs in the yawning plus due to this shift there is disturbance in the transverse one side cross by de develops another side there is disturbance in the anterior posterior relation also one side the mandible comes forward this is called ya yeah. that's why i asked to remember ya yeah, how the second one is roll i asked them to remember right and left r for r the vertical relationship the change in the vertical relationship between the right and left so one side down one side up so vertical relationship the role so what happens this it is vertical mole relationship it causes a transverse disturbance also one side the teeth goes inside and the teeth comes outside at the same time role is what is nothing but one side up and down right and left disturbances remember that the right and left disturbances in the height is called as role and pitch how i remember is cricket pitch you start bowling from this end to that end from anterior to posterior or posterior to end that's why i remember 
P or posterior, anterior, posterior or sagittal direction. It is the pitch, the occlusal cant is the pitch in anterior, posterior direction. What happens? This is nothing but either the anterior teeth come down or the posterior teeth come down. This is called as pitch and this is called as your roll, the left and right, up and down and yeah. This is called as yaw, yawning. And yaw is a dynamic, whereas whether the other tool, the roll and pitch, you can see in a static relationship. This is one of the very important questions, almost all from 2016 to 2000, recent 2021, every paper is having one question on this concept. And many of you answered as it is uh, Ya yeah, roll and pitch answers. Ya yeah, roll and pitch. So I'll put in uh, another way how the question, this question may be asked. So they can point out at any point of time and they might give you not only picture based uh, uh, the question, they may ask what is that uh, uh, that is seen in vertical relation when there is disturbance in transverse and uh, sagittal along the transverse and sagittal guidelines or planes. So this is, so this question also you may get. Now you can clearly understand. This is what is called as you are. Can you identify now? One, two, three, instead of me telling, you see here, the patient is vertical axis. There is anterior posterior disturbance. Here, the patient is trying to two, this side and that side, and three, this side along the transverse axis, front and back. Of course, what is one here? One, one is, yeah, it won't, it won't change. Yeah, of course, this side, it is moving to the patient's left side. This side, patient is moving. So this is, yeah. What is this? This is moving your, this is your transverse plane. It is moving this side and that side. So it is nothing but your roll. So you can see this, this is an sagittal axis. Around sagittal axis, you are moving either front or back. This is nothing but your pitch. Okay, good. Many of you are able to, and it, uh, why I'm stressing the, all these kind of questions is most of the times they are given from uh, profit book or uh, grabber and Viz book. Oh, wait, we'll allow some more waiting. One minute. Yes. So this is nothing but what we have uh, discussed. So remember just what I told, right and left deviations, front and back deviations. Yeah, when opening, whether it is deflected to this side or uh, that side. Now I will check. Uh, now can you tell, identify the cant of occlusions in this diagram? What is A here? A, B, 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 yes, A is, A is definitely pitch, you are correct. What is B here? What is happening in B? B, can you see that this is called as aesthetic line? What is aesthetic line? An aesthetic line is a line joining the incisal surfaces and the cusp tips of all anterior and posterior teeth. So this is called as your lip line, lip line. This is called as lip line. And this is called as your aesthetic line. What happening into the figure A? You can see there is pitch. So what, what type of pitch is there? Is the anterior more seen or posterior more seen? They won't go that much deep, but there is definite a pitch because you can see the amount of exposure there is difference between the posterior teeth and anterior teeth. If anterior teeth is more seen, anterior gums are more seen, you call it as uh, anteriorly, anteriorly downwards pitch or anterior pitch. Anterior pitch. Likewise, what is here? If you can see that, 
the right and left side what is happening to the left of the patient the right side has come down the left side has gone up this is called as the roll down towards right side this is called as roll down to side so what is happening here here patient is trying to open the mouth patient is trying to open the mouth the c c part i am asking now we have moved to the c part i am able to see your charts no problem interact you are very well interacting it is called as ya it is called as ya the patient is you can see it is deviating the jaw towards the left the right side of the patient so what happens when here we have the cross bite here we have a buccal cross bite here you have developed the palatal cross bite at the same time this side mandible moves forward that's why ya is seen in vertical direction along a transverse axis and it results in anterior posterior disturbance also hey, one minute i should allow again so we'll move to the next so this is what we have discuss so you remember aesthetic line and the line lip line and you can easily differentiate between a pitch roll and yeah what are the two directions what are the two planes that it is seen and in which direction it is seen you can uh, remember this very easily so this is what i am calling at a aesthetic uh, plane if you can clearly see this this patient is also having roll besides roll this patient is clearly having the roll also because here you can see the more amount of gum seen in the posterior region and less in the anterior region so he is having pitch apart from the pitch you can see there is disturbance between the left and right side so they don't go they want to ask both either they will ask pitch or roll for your clarification i have put what is called as aesthetic line and what is called as lip line so next comes uh, this also seems to be one of the favorite question of all orthodontists uh, right from your undergraduate days uh, you remember what is this i am speaking to what is this yes scam and scouse so they may give you question they may point out somewhere and ask you which tissue completes growth first and of course i'll come from that what is this tissue that shows the regression or negative growth yes it is lymphoid tissue and you can see a flat thing occurs here what is that tissue that shows the flat the flat if they put in other way you will answer what is the tissue that completes the growth first if they point out this and ask they will usually you you can answer yes it is neural tissue but they won't ask you that much right what is the tissue that shows a plateau right from the 5 years of age 5 years of age that means around 95% of the growth is completed by 6 years of uh, age and only and only you can see 90 99% by the age of 9 to 10 years then only 1% of uh, growth that occurs after this and uh, the tissue which is showing is the regression is the lymphoid tissue it grows 202% of its size and of course after puberty it decreases less than the 100% of it uh, what is it having original before this peak growth or growth? and they may put you in another way. what is that this shows s shaped growth s shaped growth yes general or somatic tissue
one minute i'm admitting again please mute your phone sir the mistake if i am not activating some of your phones are active okay so this is nothing but your uh, you can expect question either a picture based question or you can expect a direct uh, question so this remains present genital tissue up to 10 years of age or uh, this is very direct question you can answer don't go wrong here and uh, recently i have found in one of the state entrances not now before neat was introduced in 2018 or 17 so which of the following determines the maxillary mandibular relations in predentate period we know that our molar dictates the maxillary mandibular relationship in uh, our dentition permanent dentition likewise they ask what is that that decides yes many of you are very active and correct so in transverse direction i will put it in another way you can answer it what is the transverse small relationship seen during predentate period transverse direction i will see check anterior open bite is an uh, anterior direction anterior open bite definitely there will be anterior open bite what type of cross bite no it is not cross bite it is uh, somewhat like cross bite but it is complete bite complete bite just like a uh, seen uh, similar to your uh, scissors bite so whole of the mandibular dentition is overlapped by the maxillary arch in all the dimensions in all the dimension whether it is in anterior posterior or in transverse direction so normally what we have is only one cusp overlap in permanent dentition whereas what happens in predentate period is the entire mandibular arch in transverse direction is overlapped by the upper arch of course you have told it correct there will be overjet there will be open bite and it is the lateral sulci between the upper and lower gum pads that decides a relationship usually no class 3 condition will be seen in gum pad pad what is the common small occlusion in sagittal direction that is seen is class 1 class 2 or class 3 that is seen in uh, predentate period yes 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 it is class 2 it is class 2 why a class 2 relationship is seen why a class 2 relationship is seen why 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 it is class 2 relation yes it is the retruded mandible it is not actually retrognathic mandible it has not become retrognathic it is small size of mandible again you go to your basic cephalo caudal gradient of growth so during the active phase of growth catch ups and the mandible gets corrected by itself you need not do any treatment for this this is a self correcting anomaly very good this also question one saw why a child looks a class 2 relationship in a actively growing children so up to the puberty you cannot uh, correct up to the the pubertal growth phase you should not correct a class 2 condition if the patient is actively growing <clears throat> now this also a favorite topic for uh, your examiners 2018 19 and uh, 20 one way the other they have uh, put it can you identify a definite class 2 relationship occurs from which of these conditions a b c no 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 question uh, so what is the question was one minute one minute i am able to <laughs> not see myself so so which of the following gives rise to definite class 2 relationship in permanent dentition which of that yes distal step okay we know this distal step what what is it where is distal step here you should be able to identify the distal step so here the fresh terminal plane at a mesial depth yes all of you are correct it is c c distal step here the distal step refers to the step that is created by your lower teeth not the upper teeth
your uh, vertices you take mesial side so what has gone here compared to the upper e the lower e is little bit distal that means clearly indicating that maxilla dentition is a head we know that the maxilla dentition is a head it is a class 2 condition here we can see is the lower e is a head of the upper e towards mesial side that is it called as mesial step here we have call it as the flush terminal plane somebody are talking please please oh, some request have come again yes that meeting please please mute your phone sir please mute your phones i am trying to mute you all okay and which of the following usually does not lead to a class 1 relationship i have put it in another way which molar relationship is seen in mixed dentition period for diagnosis i am not able to get that uh, question what what do you mean actually can you please again type it so here you can see we are going to discuss uh, this thing so we know what is called as flush terminal plane most of the times it results in uh, a class 1 relationship the flush terminal shape end on relationship in the permanent dentition which later gets corrected to a class 1 relationship due to what is called as our forward growth of the mandible which occurs at an most active phase compared to the maxilla due to called as a cephalocaudal gradient of growth and next thing is the leeway space the difference in the leeway space between the upper and lower teeth where will be the more leeway space is it in upper or lower yes mandible mandible it is around 3.4 mm in the entire arch or 1.7 mm for the same quadrant likewise we have only 1.8 mm of the leeway space in the maxillary arch so this provides a leeway space for any of the molar adjustments that doesn't occur due to the early shift early shift is nothing but when there are spaces in the dentition or uh, the molar lands up in a class 1 relationship immediately after an end on relationship if it does not occur what happens is this leeway space is utilized this is called as late mesial shift so utilizing the late mesial shift is your leeway space due to the utilization of leeway space the flush terminal plane also lands up in a class 1 relationship but the flush terminal plane initially lands up in end to end relationship then it may land up a class 1 relationship based on upon your leeway space and the amount of the forward growth of the mandible and the difference in the size of the tooth and the deciduous distal step distal step always gives rise to a class 2 relationship that is a sign impending of a class 2 skeletal relationship remember that whenever you see a class 2 relationship in mixed dentition you should be very careful that means you should try to see the restrict the growth impending if at all anything happening if the maxilla and mandible if the maxilla is growing more or if the mandible is not growing properly you should care to see what is called as uh, growth changes you have to bring about your uh, orthopedic and uh, functional appliances growth stimulation or growth restriction this one of your interceptive orthodontics so mesial step most of the times it is gives rise to a class 3 at the same time it gives rise to class 1 if it is more mesial step you should be very careful whether it is a skeletal class 3 or it is a just a, a dental class 3 which is adjusting so out of all these the distal step definitely gives rise to class 2 these may or may not give plus terminal or mesial step and of course which do not give a class 2 relationship is flush terminal and mesial i think uh, the concept is clear
angles classification should not be used in mixed dentition. This is one of the drawbacks of uh, angles classification. Angles classification, you cannot apply. You cannot apply for a mixed dentition or if the first molar is itself missing. In cases, first, me, first molar is missing, you apply what is called as CADS classification, K-A-T-Z. Remember, this is also given once. So you see the relationship in premolar area. This is called as CADS relationship. Just like how you assess the canines, you see what is called as premolar. Always, if you see our dentition, it is a peculiar phenomena that all the posterior teeth in the mandible are, are, are one cusp ahead of your uh, the maxillary dentition. But if it comes to the anterior teeth, there is surprisingly overlap of the maxillary teeth on the mandibular teeth. Uh, this is due to the difference in the size of the maxillary and mandibular dentition. Yes, premolar classification or CADS classification, you have to check. So this is one of the questions. This, you should not uh, go wrong. They may ask, what is this? What is the space difference? So what is the difference in the upper arch? What is the difference in the lower arch? And what is the difference? How much is the difference between the uh, permanent teeth and the primary teeth in the upper arch? They may ask how much difference in the lower teeth between the permanent and uh, primary teeth. This, may, this is the one of the question about leeway space. You can get a direct question and direct uh, answer you can uh, answer this one minute admitting <clears throat> am i going little bit speed is it okay this much speed Yes, yes, it is 3.4 mm in mandible, not maxilla. Dr. Monica, please correct it. No, no. Upper less, lower more. That's why more of mesial movement of mandibular molar. Maxillary it is less. It is 1.8 mm for whole arch. Mandible it is 3.4 millimeters. Yes. So this is uh, just I put the friends. And uh, one more question is uh, about diagnosis. Uh, they may put some question. What is the mal occlusion you are seeing in this uh, diagram? Yes. Yes, yes. It is transmission between canine and a premolar. You can easily identify it. what transposition is. Most common, is it between lateral and canine or canine and premolar? Yes, yes, canine and premolar. Yes, very good, very good, very good, very good. So, you know what is this? So simple, just very direct questions you will get. Now, coming to this, uh, I am not going to the very basics, uh, which you already read in your BDS curriculum. They may ask about the ratios. They may put a diagram of the length of the face, breadth of the face. They may ask what type of face is it. And uh, this question in well-balanced face, this is one of the question uh, given in uh, Public Service Commission of one of the states. Then so well-balanced face, what is the ratio of A is to B? No, that is the not faces they are asking. Okay, you might have confused that. That's why that's why I'm putting that question also. They are asking about the soft tissue here. If not 45 is to 55, they have given some uh, one is to two, one is to three, one is to four, like two is to one. What will be your ratio? They are asking about your uh, yes, yes, yes. That's why I ask you to be careful. It is not one is to three, it is one is to two. Be careful, Upasana. This is what happens. This is what happens. They are asking about the ratio. They are not asking about this is one third A, B is two third. That means total is three. There, there we will go wrong in uh, hurry up. So see what they have asked, whether they have asked uh, the ratio or the total proportion. This is. So one third and two third. If you take ratio, it comes to the one is to two ratio. Okay. 
understand i'm just trying to correct you know the every every one of us knows in a hurry we will put almost all 10% uh, question wrong i want to see that in ortho that should not go not only in ortho in the all the subjects you should not go wrong so this is what uh, same question what we are asking about uh, the upper half of the face and lower half of the weight what is the ratio between upper half and uh, lower half of the face yes 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 it is 45 to 55 to say put it in uh, one is to one ratio upper half the lower half lower half will be little bit more yes so this this type of questions also you can expect and this is a very controversial question asked so many times what is the ratio between the artistic portion and the anatomical portion so we have seen many test books and whatever it may be controversies uh, it is the basal art portion is one third and this is two third portion the anatomical portion should be two third and the basal portion should be one third uh one is to two okay i told it is a controversial question next comes your very favorite topic for uh, the paper setters you can take it grantedly definitely you can have two questions from cephalometrics and most of the times uh, it is very much uh, known to you very 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 easy questions they will put and what are the landmarks that are unilateral what are the landmarks that are in maxilla what are the landmarks that are in mandible where are the bilateral landmarks seen what are the different bilateral landmarks and they can give you any question like this and asking you to point out uh, the point out uh, <clears throat> what are these different uh, landmarks are so what is this you should be able to know and most of the favorable question is they will be giving this ptm what is called as the dancing girl in cephalometrics we call it as the dancing girl in cephalometrics this point and this you know what is this this is nothing but your orbital and this is your cella of course and this is you know gonian point yes try to identify as many as points as possible what is this yes 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 no 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 it point a it is not anterior nasal point anterior nasal spine is the tip pointed tip of the palate here it comes this is in the curvature between the anterior nasal spine and the superior dentel it is the the point a as this is point b or supra mental and again where you go wrong is in identifying the points around the chin what is the anterior most point of the chin anterior most point of the chin yes yes what is the lower most point of the chin yes menton is the lower most point of the chin so again that's what i am seeing see many of you put it is gonion no, no no why confusion gonion is point between the ramus and the body of the mandible it has nothing to do with your chin chin has three points one is the pogonion the anterior most point and the two the lower most point of the chin the menton and in between what you call it as the glathion which is the bisector of a tangent line towards your pogonion and uh, menton very good yes it is glathion some problem with the server there it is not allowing me to push up my slides some problem with the server there it is not problem here we'll do it slowly no problem so these are the various points you can see in a lateral step 
So I put PNS. This is ANS. This pallet, no? From pallet ANS. The curvature point is called as point A. So this is point B. This is what? Pogonion, Nyathion, and lowest moment point is Menton. Gonion is the point tangent bisecting the your the ramus and the body of the mandible. The 11 o'clock position of the pterygomaxillar point is called as PTM. So I want to repeat again, some requests are there. The anterior most point is Pogonion of the chin. The anterior most point is Pogonion. The lowest most point, the lowest most tangent to the point of the chin is your menton. So in between your anterior most point and the inferior most point, anterior to inferiorly is located your Gnathion. As such, the Gnathion does not exist. It's a constructed point. Am I clear now? Yes, yes. Porion. Porion is nothing but, what is Porion? Porion is nothing but your ear. Since there is no ear clearly visible, a hole here is taken as Porion. To avoid this, we started taking the machine Porion. The highest point, can you see here a ring where the ear pieces are inserted into the cephalometrix? These ear rings above the point at 12 o'clock position of this ear rings is called as uh, the porion. PTM point is nothing but your pterygomaxillary fissure. This is your pterygomaxillary fissure. The 11 o'clock point is taken as the PTM point. Is it, is it clear now? Any doubts regarding this? Cella. Basion, Bolton point, Nation, they won't go much uh, deep. Previously, they used to go very deep in uh, INI set examinations that are uh, too much for PGs also. Now, we cannot expect you to learn in this one and a half month and all that. But remember the basics. PTM is nothing but pterygomaxillary fissure. Pterygomaxillary fissure. PTM point, pterygomaxillary fissure. P is silent. Dancing gold, yes, it is called as dancing gold. Can you see here? It, it stands on one, one leg and it, it touches the PNS point. So that's why it is called as a dancing gold. Okay, shall I move on to the next topic? So you can clearly see this is a PTM, pterygomaxillary feature. That is it's called as a PTM. And uh, recently in one of the entrances, 2019 or 20, what is this point called? What is this point marked uh, X called? Yes, it is registration point or R point, it is called as R point or registration point. So, when connecting the Bolton Nation plane, when you drop a perpendicular from the cella, the midpoint of it is called as the R point. I put it as X, it is called as R point registration point. Why it is called as registration point is in successive cephalograms, we will project at the R point parallel to this registration point. All the successive radiograph, this Bolton and Nation point are projected parallel. This is also a question given in uh, uh, NEET 2020. All the successive, the radiographs or cephalograms should be made parallel to this uh, plane on the registration point. So this is called as registration point. So this is your uh, registration point. Now understand. Yes, why it is stable point? Because again, go back to basics. It is the cranial base which completes the growth first. We have what it is called as the nation to the cella to nation anterior cranial base, which is related to growth of your maxilla. And of course, in the middle cranial fossa, we have what is called as the mandibular glenoid fossa attached to the posterior cranial fossa. So this point, if you can see, it is combining the nation and the Bolton, the whole length of the cranial base. So that's why it's a stable point. Cephalocaudal gradient of growth. Yes, very good. 
since it is present towards the chef or towards the skull, it is the one which completes the growth first. Again, going back to the another way, since it contains the neural tissue, which is first to complete the growth, again, it is related to Stemmen's growth curves. Yes, very good. And sometimes they ask about any important uh, lines which were found in normal uh, cephalometric analysis like this. What is the line X5? Both uh, gonion and gnathion are constructed points. According to the sum, gonion angle they will take. Actually, gonion point doesn't exist. Gonion angle will be there. So what they do is they draw a line tangent to the ramus and tangent to the mandible. And the bisector, they take it as in uh, roughly. So, so they draw a line like this. They draw a line like this. The bisector point, they take the gonion point. As such, gonion point doesn't exist. The gonion angle exists in mandible. Yes, it is y-axis. And where the y-axis measured is the anterior inferior angle. Be careful about this also. This angle where you measure. Which analysis it is seen? Where you get? Yes, it is seen in Down's analysis. Very good, very good. OK. If the angle is more, what it indicates? What is the normal angle? No, it is not class 2. It indicates vertical growth or the mandible is rotating backwards around 54 to 59 degrees. If it rotates back, this angle increases. It indicates the downward and backward rotating mandible. At the same time, if this angle closes, it indicates a forward or anti-clockwise growing or a horizontal growing mandible. Yes, 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 exactly correct. So this is your y-axis. So what this analysis is? And who has given uh, that analysis? Yes. The lines down from perpendicular to occlusal plane from point A to point B is called as a width surprisal or width analysis. Why it is called widths? Sometimes you may not expect to get these questions because these are given. Why it is called widths and who has given it? So width surprisal is given by Jacobson. Now it's uh, due to the university name, Wittsland University. It is called as Wits appraisal. It is given by Jacobson. So according to the research to sagittal analysis of maxilla and mandible, the least prone variation is by Wits analysis. What are the other methods of seeing the sagittal relationship between maxilla and mandible? We have very common SNA and SNB, A and B angle. So it is subjected to change. Yes, Tina's SNA and SNB. It is subjected to change. Why? Because in many of the patients, true horizontal. That means this is called as true horizontal. The line joining the porion and the orbital or our Frankfurt horizontal plane, close to our horizontal, true horizontal plane. Sometimes we know that V principle of growth from the cella, the nation grows more upwards, more upwards, and the maxilla grows more downwards creating a more recent plane compared to the Frankfurt horizontal plane. So when the nation is not consistent, they may give different readings. That why, according to the recent research, the width surprisal is taken as the standard, is the least variable that measures the sagittal relationship between uh, maxilla and mandible. And uh, you may expect uh, from Handrich tech trace, Yes, you should be careful at SMI. They won't give SMI, but they will ask about uh, what is this A and B? What is that given in A and B? So the presence of that in A indicates definitely pubertal growth, but has uh, started. Yes, yes, yes. That question is also given. It is sesamoid bone. Can you see a small ring-like thing here? It is called as sesamoid bone. What is this? This indicates almost at the verge of completion of uh, growth. It is represented by the letter H. 
exactly not hamet it is hook of hamet so hamet is present always can you see a hook like thing present here closely so this is all the question one fast this indicates the arrival of the pubertal growth but this marks or it is reaching the so one more question uh, you can find out uh, uh, about the uh, menar the arrival of menar indicates in females the onset of growth the peak pubertal growth or decelerating growth first or clo closure of active growth but what it indicate no 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 it is not onset once there is menarche means the girl has already crossed the peak pubertal growth but phv it is crossed phv so she will be in the decelerating growth phase why we have to see this in accelerating growth phase you will give what is called as removable functional appliances in decelerating growth phase you call fixed functional appliances that's why if menarche indicate that the girl has definitely crossed the peak at a velocity she may be in the decelerating growth phase but not reach the closure or end of the active growth but it is still happening after one and after two years after menarche the closure of active pubertal growth phase occurs after one and half one and half one and half years after menarche one and half to two years in indians it is more it is very close between the menarche and the closure of the active growth phase it is the time where the active growth parts are seen and they grow rapidly okay so remember this point also so this is nothing but your uh, hook of hamet and this is what is called as a sesamoid bone these two indicates <clears throat> slowly moving to the mechanics part am i going speed or should i slow down okay thank you then thank you so this question they give like this and try to identify the force system in this what is what kind of force system it is yes 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 it is interrupted force system how do you differentiate between a continuous interrupted and intermittent force system so in a light continuous force which give with fixed appliances the rate of decay is very slow very slow but never it reaches the zero before it reaches the zero we will activate the appliance so the rate of decay is only one third maximum of the initial force what we have applied because in interrupted uh, force where will give heavy forces sometimes with uh, closed loop mechanics or springs the force level abruptly falls to zero again we have to activate it there is sudden fall to zero that means after giving the appliance there will be no movement at all sometimes if you can activate an uh, rme appliance there will be initial sudden movement after that there will be no movement at all so this sudden fall of movement is seen in interrupted forces an intermediate force is usually seen with the appliances that are removed by the patient when the mouth they apply forces at an high level like your headgear once they are removed there will be no forces abruptly there will be zero yes abruptly zero intermittent yes can you see this slide i put okay this also question you can uh, expect and uh, what is the force system seen in this case yes no 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 it is couple of force it is couple of force what is a couple in orthodontics a couple is a force system it should contain two forces two forces number 
if to produce a rotation they should be equal in magnitude and of course they should produce the moments in opposite direction opposite direction usually they are used for rotation correction why i am going is slowly i am showing this around vertical axis for rotation correction of the tooth i am going to see in the anterior posterior direction now we will slowly move to it that question was recently asked in uh, need 2021 examination so it is nothing but yes couple of forces this is what is couple i am trying to say it rotates the tooth around a vertical axis so can you answer this question 2021 they have given this akut okay okay whatever moves from right to left is clockwise direction everything from here you can see so this is moving like a clock so it is here also you can see clock it is moving like a clock so this is clockwise direction this is your anti clockwise direction so yesterday i have got uh, a question from few of the students that is given wrong in some book i don't want to comment that but whatever it may be be strong in your basics don't worry about what we have given in our books the basics remain uh, as it is if any case uh, we refer to a standard uh, test book so why why this is called as the point is called as first you have to know about uh, basic concept a few questions two three questions you may expect on this uh, topic so first one is when we want to move something you would apply a force a force is that vector which has a direction and which has a quantity that moves the body how this body moves so this body moves by different ways we are not going deep so all of us what is called as any body living or non living we have what is called as center of resistance center of resistance where our mass is uh, concentrated so in human beings we have a navel region in the stomach at the navel region you can see in the circus uh, being done on street side people they will just on the navel they will support like this on a bamboo stick they are able to balance it this is because whole force whole the mass is concentrated at the navel in us navel point in us likewise in the structures in non animate structures there at that's a point where the mass is concentrated that point is called as the center of mass but for the tooth if you see the tooth is situated half of its portion embedded in the root root is embedded in the bone that only upper part is mobile lower part is not mobile in such case we give the name center of resistance this center of resistance is a fixed point remember this the center of resistance is a fixed point so can i apply force on the center of resistance so why i should apply on center of resistance if any force applied through the center of resistance will bring about a bodily movement why bodily movement mean the teeth should move bodily within the alveolus between the two cortical bones for a good movement of course there are situations where you require torque and tipping but for a good tooth movement it should have a bodily movement it should have a bodily movement this bodily movement is possible when only the force is sent through the center of resistance if it is not acting center of resistance we cannot apply to the center of resistance for a tooth which is uh, situated which is uh, situated inside the root in such a case we apply to the crown surface where a force is applied to a bracket bracket for the attachment where we apply the force so what happens this force is applied at a distance l or d from the center of resistance so when i apply this force it tries to create a moment the couple of moment of a couple or tendency to rotate moment of a force or the tendency is to rotate instead of rotation 
dipping is also a kind of uh, rotation. It tries to rotate the teeth. I want to move the tooth like this, but it is trying to rotate and move like this, which I don't want. This is called as the moment of force. Now you remember that. You remember this important point now. Now I cannot apply the force center of distance, but what I have applied is causing a moment of force. To cancel this moment of force, I have to apply what is called as counter moment of force in the reverse direction. This decides whether your tooth movement is going to a body or translatory movement or whether it is going to a rotatory movement or it is controlled tipping or uncontrolled tipping if it is rotatory and whether it is going to torque. What is torque? Torque is nothing but the movement of the root without the root of the crown. It is just opposite to your tipping. We are going to discuss all this point now. According yes, it is now, can you see here, when this force is applying, it is trying to rotate the crown at a moment equal into F into D, that 1200 grams per mm moment of force in clockwise direction to put it, it is trying to move the crown in parallel direction and the root in the labial direction. If you go on putting this, what happens after some time, this root comes and touches the labial cortical plate and it undergoes the resorption which we want. We always want the tooth to be within the alveolus cortical on both sides with cortical plate. In the alveolar housing, we should move the tooth. So this question is given in 2021. Up to here, it is correct. Now, the another point is, uh, which I would like to discuss, is, uh, are you able to follow up me up to here? Yes. If you can see here, another X point is there. Can you see here X? X. X here. X here. Okay. This is called as center of rotation. What is that called? Center of rotation. So this center of rotation is nothing but a point where the initial and final lines drawn through the center of the long X of the tooth meet. This is called as center of rotation. Can you see all these points marked X in the round are constant, they have not changed. This constant position as we have discussed is called as center of resistance. Whereas this X point, which is not in the round is constantly changing from here to here, from here to here, here to here. It is called as center of rotation. So, so why is center of resistance for a single rooted tooth? It is from half of the distance, some textbooks say, it is around in the one third from the tip, whatever it may be. So then I apply a tipping force. That means a force here without giving a counter moment force. So what happens is there is zero. That is uncontrolled tipping. So the MCA by MF ratio becomes zero. And my center of rotation is just, is just apical to the center of resistance. So next comes, if I am able to give the counter moment little bit, little bit counter moment, so that there won't be much moments created by the original force, then this becomes an controlled tipping. So for controlled tipping, the center of rotation is at the point, the apical third is exactly at the apical third. Both are tipping. This is uncontrolled tipping. This is controlled tipping. And you can see that the center of rotation shifts from uncontrolled tipping to controlled tipping to the apical region. But you can still deal with the moments are there. Moments created by the virginal force, MF are not controlled. But coming to the next, can you see here, there are no moments. This is called as translatory movement or bodily movement. If I draw a line connecting the initial and final position of the teeth, they will meet somewhere infinity. Infinity. They will meet somewhere at infinity. This point where they meet at infinity is seen in the translatory movement. Translatory movement. The another where it is seen outside the tooth. Outside the tooth it is seen. In intrusion and extrusion also you can see that the point of rotation, the center of rotation is outside the tooth. It is not within the tooth. What is center of rotation? 
center of rotation is nothing but where the long axis of the tooth before and after the tooth movement meet. So now I want only the roots to move, roots to move, just opposite of this, just opposite of this uncontrolled tipping. This is torque. Now what happens? I want to torque and hold the teeth to move this side. So there is tendency to move. Whenever there is moment, this causes the roots to tip back into the palate and the roots and the crown to tip back labially. But I don't want to be, this is held by some means and only in such cases torque. I have to apply more counter moments than what is produced by the original moment by force. Then what happens in such a case, the center of rotation shifts to the incisal area. Then this produces what is called as torque or the movement of the roots without the movement of the crown, which is just opposite to that of uncontrolled tipping. Is the concept clear up to here? Any doubts? These questions are given. You will get definite one question on this. No, no, no. Center of resistance and center of rotation should never coincide in bodily movement. It is infinity. The farther it is, the center of rotation, farther from the center of resistance. So when it is close to the center of resistance, you can see it is an uncontrolled tipping. The more it moves the center of rotation away from the center of resistance, we are able to control the tooth movement from an uncontrolled tooth movement to a controlled tooth movement. And if you are able to control 100%, that means the moment created by the forces, original forces, is counterbalanced by the moments which we have given. There are many ways of giving this counterbalance. It is up to the PG level, but just remember now, we are able to counteract by the moments created. So we usually we create these moments within the bracket area. Within the bracket area, that is it, that is it called as edgewise. We'll keep the bracket in edgewise so that within the bracket area, these moments are applied. That is one of the difference between BEG and uh, the edgewise mechanism. In BEG, what do you get it is, we try to torque the roots. We try to torque the roots by giving torquing axillary in third phase of treatment. Now you understand? So if we go on increasing the counter moment, MC, you can see from uncontrolled tipping to the control tipping, control tipping to the bodily moment and to the torque. And what is that portion that is constant? It is center of resistance. Center of resistance is always constant, it won't change. So this center of resistance is constant to make constant for a particular type of movement. So we are going to discuss in uh, Maxilla what we see now. <clears throat> so far, single rooted tooth, it is located between midway or towards the apical one third, around 40 to 50 percent distance. For a center of resistance for a multi rooted tooth, it is located at uh, one minute, if somebody wants to admit some. Yes. Sorry. Center of resistance is located at the percussion area. One to two millimeters above the percussion area for multi rooted tooth. So when it comes for the whole body, when it comes to the maxillary basal bone, it is situated somewhere in the maxillary spinal. And uh, for intrusion, it is between the lateral and uh, the canine for intrusion. For the anterior posterior movement, it is in the sinus region. If you take whole of the maxillary dentition, see how the center of resistance depending upon the body. Body means here a single body. When I take a single tooth, it is single body. When I take a set of tooth, it becomes a single body compromising of all the maxillary teeth. It is called as maxillary dentition body. For that, it is situated between the premolars. These questions are being asked so many times. So remember that what they are asking you, the center of resistance for a single rooted tooth, single rooted tooth resistance for a multi-rooted tooth, whether they are asking for the maxillary, for the intrusion, or for they are asking for the maxillary, for the anterior posterior direction. Depending upon this center of resistance of the maxilla, you are the cervical headgear or you are the occipital headgear. So what in cervical headgear? we use a point of attachment below the center of resistance. So the maxilla tries to rotate down. So what happens if it rotates down? The vertical bite decreases. 
a vertical bite increases sorry that we are going to in some other class but up to this point you remember what is center of resistance so this question is also asked so many times what happens to the center of resistance when there is bone loss when there is alveolar bone loss what happens see this no no when there is bone loss it chip to the apical it depends upon the amount of the bone remaining bone remaining it depends to the bone remaining the more the bone same time it depends when there is apical eruption of the tooth there is chip towards the coronal area when there is the coronal bone eruption there is chip towards the apical area okay these two things remember any doubts up to here so now it becomes very clear to you this point is very very important that's why i'm much stressing on this so now just imagine i have drawn a line through the long axis of my tooth this is my initial position of the tooth this is the final position so i have drawn from a to this point now if i draw the points like this and like this where they are meeting they are meeting at the apical area in such a case what do you call this identify the type of tooth movement when they meet at center of resistance when they meet at the apical end with this control tipping now you understand what i mean to say the initial position and final position so for the tipping always the center of resistance is apical to the center of resistance center of resistance rotation is apical to the center of resistance the more the center of rotation moves away from the center of resistance the more controlled will be the tipping in most of the cases it is not possible to bring a exact translatory movement or bodily movement we cannot move exactly bodily we cannot it's a biological tissue how can we predict how much of moment of forces are created that's for a structure which is situated inside the bone alveolar bone and it which is uh, guided or which is influenced by many factors like uh, your presence of alveolar bone your width of periodontal ligament in such cases always try to see that your mf should be matched counterbalanced by mc so closely bring your mc to mf so that your uncontrolled tipping becomes a controlled tipping now it is clear from the diagram what type of tooth movement is it yes, it is a controlled tipping so these are you can expect a questions on this also a guide for the tooth movement mc by mf ratios so what happens if it is zero so if mc is zero a pure if mf is more than mc there is it is the let's just the zero are equivalent to zero then it is pure tipping uncontrolled tipping if it is more than zero or less than one if you go on increasing the mc there is controlled tipping if the ms mc if mf is one you will add bodily movement or mc to mf is greater than one we have call it as torque in same thing we have m by f ratios i think you remember m by f ratios very well am i sure are you thorough with m by f ratios what is the m by f ratio in torque m by f ratios m by m by f ratio i am asking yes 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 12 is to 1 for for bodily movement it is 10 is to 1 below 10 it is it is below 10 it is tipping the ratio becomes less it becomes an uncontrolled tipping now you understand the point what is uncontrolled tipping what is controlled tipping what is bodily movement and what is torque
So now you see here, this is your initial position. This is your final position. Are the lang axis of the initial and uh, the final positions of the teeth meeting? Are they meeting? Are they intersecting? No. If they are running parallel, they meet at a point where nowhere exists. That is at infinity. In such a case, the movement is said to be? Yes, exactly correct. It is bodily movement. Now you understand the concept why it is called as bodily movement. So when, when MF is trying to create a bodily movement, I have applied an MC equivalent to MF so that the initial point and the final point in my body, here body means in my tooth, remain the same height or same distance in the root portion, in the crown portion they have moved. This produces what is called as translationary movement. In such cases, we have what is called as MF is equal to MD. MC or your M by F ratio is equal to 10. And in exam, don't expect that they will ask M by F ratios. They will ask about MF is equal to MC. If you, they ask about M by F ratios, you are very lucky. It is a direct uh, question and you can answer. What is somebody has put canine and premolar? Yes, M by F ratio is 10 is to 1. So controlled tipping, same. We have discussed already. Now see this side, what happens is, so when I join my initial and final position, so what is happening to your center of uh, rotation? It is very close to your center of resistance, but it is apical. It is apical to your center of resistance. What happens if center of rotation shifts towards the incisal edge or towards the incisal side of the center of resistance? What happens? Yes, torque is produced. If it moves towards the incisal edge, it produces torque. If it moves epically, the more epically from the uncontrolled tipping to the controlled tipping to the bodily movement, the more it moves, the more incisally it produces what is called as torque. In uncontrolled tipping, we have M by F ratio is equal to 5. And M by F ratio in controlled tipping is uh, 7, I think. I put as sorry, 5. It is 7. For uncontrolled tipping, it is less than five. No, no, not control tipping. Control tipping and uncontrolled tipping are apical to the center of resistance only. Yes. All tippings are apical to the center of resistance. All torques are towards the bracket or towards the incisal edges. Yes, for uncontrolled, it is five is to one. For controlled, seven is to one. For the bodily movement 10 is to 1 and for torque 12 is to 1. Yes, good, good. You're all correct. So this is your uh, torque. What happens? See now torque. If I join my initial and final position, it is coming at the tip of the brackets or near the bracket or it is incisal to the bracket area. In such case, M by F ratio is 12 and in fact, I have applied more, more uh, counter moments than the original forces produced. This is gives rise to M by F ratio of 12 or the MC by MF ratio is greater than 1. So these are the sum of the points I would like to discuss regarding the mechanics. Uh, any doubts up to here? We are going into the next part, next phase. How are your levels? How much time can you hear patiently? No, no, how much can, how much more time can I take for you? Okay, until end, sure. Up to nine o'clock. <clears throat> then we'll come to the appliances. This is also one of the favorable topic of uh, examiners.
few are waiting in the hall, admitting them. So, <clears throat> functional appliances seems to be a very favorite topic for uh, examiners. Can you identify this appliance? Yes, basically it is a Frankel appliance, but you see here, there are two types of appliance here, Frankel 2N, Frankel 3. We are going to discuss, uh, this question is given in All India PG 2019, NEET 2019. When I say All India PG, it is uh, NEET, okay? And of all the appliances, this is only the Frankel appliance, is the only appliance which is purely a tissue burn, of course, one and only. And the other appliances is your oral screen, if it is not permitted to touch the teeth. Why it is called a pure tissue bony? In making this, it won't touch any part of your dentition. So only the buccal muscles, the labial muscles act on this. It works, all the functional muscles works on the principles of functional matrix theory. Functional matrix theory. Why it is called oral gymnastic appliances? Patient do patient should do the exercises with his uh, lips and uh, muscles. Always try to close tightly giving exercises to the labial and uh, buccal muscles. And they act by shielding away the forces. We have seen vaccinator and uh, tongue muscles. The tongue acts from inside and the vaccinator acts from outside. So when there is narrow arches, it is due to the vaccinator muscle more acting. So what this Frankel 2, when I say functional appliances, it is most of the times uh, the functional class 2 10, class 2 appliances only. That means they are trying to correct the mandible retrusion. So here these are called as uh, lip pads. These lip pads, they shield away the lip, lip forces on the dentition. It allows the alveolar bone or the basal bone of the mandible to grow forward. And these buccal shields, they shield away the buccal musculature falling on the dentition. So they freely permit the expansion of the maxillary skeletal bone. So these are called as buccal shields and uh, labial shields. If they are present on the lower arch, it is called as FR2, Frankel 2. That means it is trying to correct a class 2 growth modulation, growth modification. It is trying to correct a growth modulation. Please always remember all the functional appliances work in a class two situation where there is skeletal abnormality due to the mandibular retrognathism and not due to the maxillary prognathism. If maxillary prognathism is there in a class two condition, what appliance you have to give? What you have to give? Yes, orthopedic appliance, orthopedic appliance. The common orthopedic appliance which you give is your headgears, all types of headgears you should give. Yes, yes, headgears. We have different headgears, the combination headgears, high pull headgear, the occipital headgear, the cervical headgear. Sometimes they show the diagram and uh, ask you to identify. It is also very easy. So what is this? Yes, 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 yes. It is a bionator. Don't go deep. It is a bionator. Bionator is also a monoblock. That means it is an also an activator like thing. Except on the palatal side, there is no plate. There are buccal wire, same like, but it is a tooth bone appliance similar to the activator. If there is any abnormality in the tongue position, this is given. So the activator is a simple functional appliance, is a simple tooth bone appliance, which is given in early phases of mixed dentition, or uh, not early phases of, uh, uh, the late phase of mixed dentition, or in early part of the growth modulation. And 
the twin box appliance is one which is given in early permanent dentition. This is the difference between uh, the activator and twin block timing. What difference you have in finding the myofunctional appliances? Do you have any difference here? So what difference? Let, let, let me post. Let's talk. No problem. You are allowed to talk. What differences you are finding? Timing. The activator is the simplest appliances. Whenever the pubertal growth phase starts, it's in the late mixed dentition. As soon as you notice that a class two skeletal condition is growing to appear in the patient, you give a late, late mixed dentition. That means still the teeth are remaining. Your primary teeth are remaining. Then you give a simple activator because at that phase, the patient is in the accelerating phase of growth, peak height velocity, before reaching the peak height velocity. Once the patient, uh, some of the teeth are gone and early permanent dentition, that means usually the functional appliances are not given when uh, second molar has erupted, second molar has erupted. But still around 11 to 12 years, if in some patients there is class two tendency, and if you check about your hand disc x-rays and uh, cervical vertebrae, Still, if it is showing growth, you can go for a fixed functional appliance or you can go for an, a robust appliance like a twin block. Yes, around 11 to 13 years, a twin block can be given. Remember that a twin block is a fixed and a removable type, whereas an activator is in a purely a removable type. It is the simplest type of functional appliance. And what problem you have in identifying these appliances? May I know it? Some of you have posted. If you can come out, I can answer. So there is Frankel appliance is very easy to identify. Am I correct? There is no problem in identifying the Frankel appliance. So where the problem comes in activator and activator and bionator. For activator, the whole palette is covered. It is monoblock. Both the bionator and activator are monoblock. I'll have a, some cup of tea, but continue. Both are called as monoblocks. I'll show you. So this is also an activator. This is activator, typical activator, monoblock, combining the blocks, the white blocks of your, just like how they apply of upper and lower the bite plane. Combining these two, you have called it as a mono block or activator or Norwegian, the simplest tooth burn, appliance activator. You can give in uh, headgear tubes. This is particularly given headgear tubes when you have a class two condition due to a prognathic maxilla and retrognathic mandible. You have only retrognathic mandible, you give a functional appliance. If you have only prognathic uh, maxilla, you give a headgear. Up to here, no problem, no? These are all the questions that are being given. You have to analyze what is being given. So don't blindly put all the class two cases, growing cases needs functional appliances. Functional appliances are giving an actively growing patent where the mandible is problematic, not the maxilla. If the problem is in the maxilla only, you have to give for head care. Now you can see monoblock. In early phases, you grieve. So this is a purely a tooth burn appliance. Now you can see the bionator. It's cut in the palatal area. Why this tongue guide is given is so in order to make the arches wide. So this makes the tongue sit in the palate region. So when the tongue is guided, tongue starts exerting the pressure on the arches transverse direction. So it makes the arches to grow. That's why it's given in uh, uh, with a little bit of muscle functional inactivity or muscle aberrant activity, bionator is given. Whereas activator is not given in any of the muscle aberrant activity. It is purely a tissue burn appliance. Of course, uh, to tooth burn appliance. Of course, bionator is also a purely tooth burn appliance. Take support from the tooth burn passive appliance. Here, passive and active means, active means any form of tooth movements are given, such as your screws or some springs like that. Most of the times, functional appliances are meant to bring the changes in the skeleton, basal skeleton. So no active component should be given unless it is required. So up to here, no different, no problem in identifying uh, these three important appliances, I think. 
any problem in identifying activator in bionator and uh, frankel appliances only thing is uh, remember the frankel appliance 2 and 3 for frankel appliance 2 the labial shields will be in the lower arch because to permit the forward growth of the mandible in a class 3 frankel the labial shields will be in the upper to permit the growth of the maxilla and to restrict the mandible in class 3 conditions very good so this is your activator so this is nothing but your uh, what is this from the diagram you can make it out yes is there any point in identifying this yes what is the angle between the blocks to a occlusal plane yes it is a delta clasp delta clasp is the identification mark for identifying this So it is uh, 70 degrees, not 45. If more horizontal is required, then you go for uh, 90 degrees or 45 degrees. 45 degrees you would put. Yes, up to here. No, 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 70 only. Now we are not giving 45 degrees is robust. Initially, it used to be 90 degrees. So why labial shields are given is you should go to the vaccinator mechanism. So, vaccinator mechanism is the mechanism that keeps the dentition in a neutral position. That means, from one side, your vaccinator mechanism muscles. That means, uh, your vaccinator, your lip muscles are falling. This prevents from growing the, from improving the transverse direction of the maxilla and mandible. When vaccinator is great, great force than the tongue, or due to some other conditions, when the tongue is not able to exert the pressure on the, the dental arch, due to some other condition, due to upper respiratory tract infections or some other problems, then in such cases, you try to shield the buccal muscles falling on the dentition. These are nothing but your buccal shields. So when these buccal shields are given, they try to pull the tissues towards the muscle. That means they try to, from the periosteum, they try to pull the periosteum on the bone of the maxilla on the lateral sides. So when once the, the tug of war ended, the tongue comes into the play and it starts exerting force now. So it is very easy for tongue to know exert forces because there are no neutral forces being exerted from the buccal side or labial side. So that makes the transverse growth of the jaws or that grows the correct form of arch form in transverse direction. At the same time, we give what is called as labial pads in the lower arch for a class two condition. Though in anterior posterior direction, when the labial muscle, you can see lip trap sometimes, lip trap falling on the lower dentition. Though this prevents lip trap from falling on the lower alveolar bone. So the mandible is free to move. That's why we give the labial pads. And so these are the labial pads given on the Frankel two appliance of for a correction of retrognathic mandible. So once the labial muscles and the buccal muscles are not falling, now it is very easy for your tongue to correct the what is that? forces, inherent forces. All of them utilize inherent forces within the system. They won't take any external forces. Now, yes, uh, pin block given in early permanent dentition and pin block can be given in uh, late mixing dentition, no problem. But activator won't work if it is given in a permanent dentition. Once if it is related to your, uh, what is called as skeletal activation or SMI in, indices. It is not hard and fast rule. It all takes, if it is an accelerating stage of growth spurt, 
you can go for simple activator. If it is around your peak height velocity, you go for pin block. If it is on the sloping down of the decelerating slope of growth part, you go for a fixed functional appliance. Understand up to here? Still, some more joining. So, next, slowly, we try to identify the fixed functional appliances. These are also being given in uh, recent examination for those who are uh, specially appearing for uh, INI set. So usually there are uh, four types of uh, fixed functional appliances. The first and foremost is the hubs, the piston and tube mechanism. This is called. And next, uh, we have rigid rigid means. That means uh, they won't permit the mandible to move this end and that side. Why we give a class to to push the mandible forward? They effectively push the mandible forward. So next comes your uh, very commonly used. This is the most commonly used versatile uh, appliance. You can see a spring. It is what is called somewhat hybrid appliance. It has a piston inside it over which you have a spring. But if you can see here, it is totally a spring. Again, if you can see here, this is also a pixel functional appliance, but if you can see that it is not attached to the any part of the tooth directly, it is attached to wire to wire, wire to wire. These are the four appliances normally frequently given in uh, examination. So first, this is helps appliances. This is given by Panchers, though Herbst has given in 1928. The pa Panchers has advocated uh, this appliance. So this appliance can be given as a fixed and removable. Most of the times it is given in fixed. Either it can be given or bonded or banded. It is directly attached to the molar, molar by crown, by band, any form can you give. It is a very sturdy mechanism, a rigid mechanism. The first and foremost, uh, the fixed functional appliance is your, the herbs appliance. Can you identify here? In the canine region, they are given to the banks here, and it is piston and tube mechanism. No spring is present in the herbs appliance. I think you can easily identify this herbs appliance. Okay, shall I move to the next one? So, this is herbs. There are many ways of giving herbs. All these are herbs. You can see here banded appliance and uh, and you can see <coughs> the crowns with the clasps and crowns clasps they have taken their acrylic plate is being placed sometimes crowns may be placed directly these are various forms of uh, the herbs appliance. So what is this appliance now? What is this appliance? I've seen many of you giving answers. Now come out. Is it having rod? Is it having any rod? First, first try to answer. Is it having any rod? See it, see it carefully. Is it flexible? It is not flexible. It is not flexible. It is very straight. Can you see like helps it is very flexible. 
despite of its rigidity there is spring on it yes can you see the spring over here so it is a way in between help stem your jasper jumper so it is not a jasper jumper it is not your help then what it can be yes it is forces applied zone stick is normally given for digitalization so please please mute please mute somebody are talking see this is the commonest fixed functional appliance that is given worldwide forces appliance so remember this so it produces more of the changes compared to the herbs the skeletal changes in maxilla it is nothing but your can you see it is in a, a class 3 baker's anchorage that means it is trying to move the maxilla back any class 2 functional appliances will try to restrict the maxilla they try to push the maxilla back and try to pull the push the mandible forward and hold the maxilla back they allow the mandible in a forward direction so this is directly attached at the maxillary region remember this why i am telling this this is directly attached at the molar band of the maxillary molar in herbs appliances piston and tube mechanism no spring will be there and both sides at posterior and anterior in maxilla and mandible if you can see it is directly attached to the tooth trying to go back your server is not permitting so okay okay i am here hi here i have my helps can you see here helps it is directly attached to the tooth here and there is no spring piston and tube mechanism this is here you have spring though there is not somewhat hybrid mechanism this is and in the posterior end it is attached to the upper molar but anterior end a hook is attached to the wire it is not attached to the any part of the dentition but it exerts its force on the canine bracket so this is nothing but your forces a forces is a hybrid of uh, what we call it as an helps and a jasper jumper okay shall i move to the next one are you clear up to here the difference between helps and forces so this is your forces so this is your power scope recently used these are the two most commonly used one is the forces appliance and one is the power scope power scope very easy to install but there are difficulties of uh, dislodgement of the appliance very very easy to uh, apply can you clearly see no part of the appliance is either directly attached at the posterior end to the molar or to anterior end at the canine region in the mandible they are attached to the wires with the help of a screw this is the only the functional appliance that get attached to the wire component not any part of the main component of the dentition it is one of the advantages this is how this is called as power scope this is called as power scope these two are of course first is forces next is your power scope these are the two commonly used appliances this is also piston and tube mechanism similar to herbs but is not attached directly to the tooth is it clear all of you become silent feeling hungry Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Now, after telling all this, you can easily identify what is this. Yes, 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 yes. Jasper jumper is a spring, very flexible. It won't be straight. It is more flexible. one of the advantages it is more flexible it allows the mandible to grow this end and this side but since it is flexible it is not rigid in correcting the the mandible forwards so that is why it has not become much success
but it is very patient friendly now you got all the four if at all any question is asked so these are all the means of jasper jumper it gets distorted it is more flexible so what is this looking like which appliance it is looking like to all of the things which i have discussed so far which appliance it is looking like yes it is looking close to the herbst it is the recent modification of herbst appliance the piston and tube mechanism instead of attaching at the canine region by the crown portion it is attaching to the lower molar whatever it may be the the principle is to propel the mandible forward that is called as advancing if at all there is a chance you may question on this what is the most modified version of the herbs it is advancing okay so this is one of the another appliance which use elastics simple appliance it is called as carrier motion appliance you see the attachment of elastics clasp to elastics pulling the mandible extra oral appliances just one hook is there uh, this is given in profit that's why i got doubt and uh, i created this slide so remaining all they pushes the mandible forward whereas this is pulls the mandible from anterior to backward others will push the mandible from back to forward this is called as carrier motion appliance there is no direct attachment between the upper and lower except by the way of elastics and we have same thing small rod and hook mandible or protraction appliances these are only the maximum things in uh, functional appliances that are being used of course there are around 120 modifications of functional appliances that are used tested all around the world but that is not important to you remember this the removable functional appliances and the fixed functional appliances had gear uh, not uh, covered it is not that much uh, important had gear you can easily identify that the problem they won't go deep into if permits we'll see next class what do you want in headgear actually so now we see carrier motion appliance so carrier motion appliance is not directly attached between the so it is not directly attached by any one of the attachments so what we do is see in all these appliances we are trying to push the mandible from back to front the force is generated at backwards and pushing the mandible forward forward but if you can observe the carrier we are pulling the mandible forward from a anchor point situated in the anterior region okay is it clear this is only the difference and there is no direct attachment between the upper and lower jaws except an elastic one so this is a simple mandibular protraction appliance no piston and tube mechanism just a simple rod will be there in the tube it is mandibular protraction appliance so tats nowadays the tats are also given <clears throat> what type of anchorage is it so it is a very direct question and uh, yes 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 <laughs> that's why i put question so actually the question is wrong 
So all tags are stationary anchorage. That means they are the anchor units. They remain stationary. If at all permitted, they have been moved. But the word, if we have to choose between two things, it is absolute anchorage. That means not a single millimeter of movement occurs in the tags. That is why it is called as absolute anchorage. So no doubt it is stationary anchorage. When a question of this type is given, you have to take a choice because it is a multiple choice and best of the worst. You have to take a choice. So it is an absolute. The meaning absolute means the anchor unit absolutely won't move in not intended direction. It intends to move the reactive units only. So another important uh, question is, this is also given in ones. Uh, how do you identify different types of expansion appliances? Yes. First thing is you have to see whether they are tooth bone or tissue bone or both. So if, if at all, if anything is given like this, it is meant to put an acrylic. So banded, first banded taking only support from the tooth. Next is tissue bone, whether they are taking the support from the tissue. So banded tooth to and tissue bone both they take from the tissue and the band. They are very sweller and air type. If you have only the banded taking from the tooth, then it is what is called it as uh, Isaacian or Hyrax. So the difference between Hyrax and Isaac is the type of the screw or the expansion mechanism. Here it is called as mini, mini expander. So just they're turning the nut, it will be compressing the coil. When the compresses the coil, it starts expanding the arch due to its force. So it is a purely tooth bone fixed fix. So it is an Isaacian type of appliance. So now you can see here the difference. Isaacian is tooth bone. So this is Batterman banded. Tooth. There is no tissue given here, tissue supported here also. It is not touching the pallet. If it touches the pallet, these things, it becomes a, see here, the hyrax can be made as a tissue bone also. If acrylic touches, if it is not touching and simply it is using a, a screw in the middle and taking the support is either it can be a Biderman screw or it is an hyrax screw. If a tissue component is present on the palatal side, it is either a deris filler or it may be a horse type of palatal expander. Is it clear? Shall I move to the next topic? Any doubts? So what is this appliance? First identify the appliance. Sometimes they may ask you to identify the appliance. Yes. And what type of anchorage it provides? What is the lip bumper in upper arch called? Yes, it is called as Dan Hall's appliance in upper arch. It is lip bumper. It takes support from your uh, lower lip. It provides muscular anchorage. We are discussing about the lip pads. This is where the lip pads uh, work. Next, 
same vaccinator mechanism and functional matrix theory. They try to shield up the lip muscles. They allow the tooth to dentition to grow or mandible to grow forwards. At the same time, in the case of lip pads, it is restricted here. But in lip pads, the force is deviated distally to the molar area and molar gets distalized. So we have Dan Hall's appliance. This can be used, the lip bumper can be used as removable and fixed. Most of the times it is used as a fixed appliance. And next, uh, nowadays, slowly they have gone deep uh, into the giving this type of headgear. This headgear I'm going to discuss. So when is this given? What is this? What is this appliance? What is this appliance basically? This is a face mask. This is face mask. When it is given, what are the conditions in which a face mask is given? A first mask is given when there is a retruded maxilla combined with maxillary prognathism or not, mandibular prognathism or not. When there is maxillary retrognathism combined with mandibular prognathism or not, you will go for what is called as face mask or reverse pull headgear. Reverse pull headgear or ventrally acting headgear. All the headgears will pass to the dorsal side except this which exerts force to the ventral side. The front of our body is ventral. If you remember the anatomical position. This is our dorsal side. So, mid face is nothing but your maxilla. It is called as reverse pull headgear. Where it takes anchorage from? It takes anchorage from the your the frontal bone and the chin region. Frontal bone and the chin region. It takes support. So, it restricts the growth of the mandible and it pulls the growth of the maxilla out. So, it is given in a class 3 conditions where there is Initially, there is retrognathic maxilla. So, now they are going a little bit deep and they are asking about the type of uh, appliances, type of uh, face masks. So, remember, all face masks have this component and a connecting metal framework and an intraoral appliance and these elastics, he is wearing elastics to pull the maxilla out. These elastics usually in normal direction of maxilla, they are given at a 20 degrees to the occlusal plane. So that maxilla grows normally to the downwards and forwards. So remember this framework, why I am telling is we are going to discuss. So it is petit mal of face mask. So we have other types of delayer type of face mask. And another is the turbinger or bottle. You can see the bottle shaped, bottle shaped framework here. It is called as turbinger. The other is delays face mask, which has a wide face metallic frame. So these are the three types: petit mal, delire, and the turbinger face mask. It is below the below the occlusal plane, 20 degrees below the occlusal plane. 20 degrees uh, below to the occlusal plane. Okay. And uh, elastics, uh, these are very easy to identify. I have seen one question. What is the distance between uh, two holes in a small and uh, large uh, e chain recent one of the exams so usually this is e chain in e chain for small it is between uh, the gap the distance between uh, is 2.5 millimeters and for large it is 4.4 millimeters and of course, it depends upon many factors. I don't know why they have in question. It depends upon the diameter of the ring. So when elastic rings are continuous, 
it is called as e chain remember that for small it is 2.5 millimeters between the two centers of the rings for large it is 4.4 millimeters of course for small it is 0.1 inch diameter for large it is 0.16 0.16 diameter okay carry it out so what is the distance in small between the holes it is 2.5 millimeters and yes yes 0.1 inch diameter 0.1 inch diameter so for a large it is 4.4 and 0.16 inch diameter for large 0.16 inch diameter yes 0.16 inch diameter for large yes yes exactly correct and these are the different types of uh, elastics elastic modules elastic ligatures elastic separators any question uh, you can get most of the times they will give the how the elastics are uh, where what type of elastic these are patients are using if it is worn like this it is called as the class 1 elastics horizontal if it is wearing in diagonal connecting the two arches it is nothing but your baker's anchorage or intra arch elastic traction from upper canine to lower molar it is class 2 elastics from upper molar to lower canine it is class 3 elastics of course it is correction for posterior cross bite this question is given many times why this elastics are worn here so it is given for it is for correction of it is for correction of the posterior cross bites of single tooth these are box elastics for open bite and these are w or m or any shape what it may be these are called as settling elastics why these are given these are called as diagonal elastics diagonal elastics are worn from canine of upper arch from right side to the left side lower canine they are used for midline correction they are used for midline correction these are the various uses of our uh, elastics so these are given what are this they are given once they ask is a very simple question and uh, separator they ask about uh, separator this is one of the common non elastic separator that is being used it is called as kesseling separator or kesseling spring it is called as kesseling separator or kesseling spring and uh, recently i have seen with a little dmr uh, or in ortho you will get a question where is your yield point where is clinical and proportional limit is there where the the force and uh, deflection will be in a straight line from there proportional limit or there is 10% deflection and the difference between range up to the yield point is called range so spring point after deflection or clinical loading occurs you call it as spring back this and the most common question is asked the areas between the load and deflection curve what is the area up to the whole failure point is called what is that up to the point of the yield point or proportional limit area is called one is resilience and the another is formability these things uh, they are given in a dmr sometimes if they want to check you in relation to the arch wires they will give you this question <laughs> so another favorite question when you read in a pedo or ortho you should be able to identify this uh, what is this yes what are the other names of it intralular appliances yes yes and you should be able to know why they are given this is given many times and all the appliances pin and tube and they are given uh, whether it is an interceptive or preventive procedure okay good preventive procedures space maintainers are all 
preventive space regainers are all interceptive procedures remember this simple space maintainers all preventive space regainers are interceptive another favorite question quad helix this appliance uh, what is the appliance that is given during mixed dentition space uh, that helps in skeletal expansion squad helix squad helix it may be bi helix if two times if only two helix are given it is given as bi helix it may be fixed or removable it comes with your tongue spikes no 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 rapid maxillary no it is not a kind of rapid maxillary expansion it is a slow maxillary expansion that too limited to only to the mixed dentition period slow maxillary expansion limited to mixed dentition period what is this appliance this also once you got yes night eye what is the full name of it yes night eye palatal expander it is called as night eye palatal expander good so sometimes this is given with uh, distalization as well as expansion also we can slightly modify it and given for uh, distalization but most of the times we give it for the expansion of the arch what is this appliance pendulum appliance why it is given why it is given it is not pendex i will come to the pendex pendulum appliance is purely a distalizing appliance where you have the nancy palatal button this is your nancy palatal button for anchorage which takes support from the palate and the premolar and distalizes the molar how much force it exerts it is also given distalization of molars maxillary molars yes 250 grams of force what wire it is made up of not pounds grams tma wire 0.36 tma wire good you can easily identify this appliance yes yes tma wire the stainless steel usually not given it is made with tma wire only if tma wire is not available you can go for the stainless steel but it is usually made with a tma wire what is this what what the things you can see here you can see a nancy palatal button you can see an expansion screw you can see a appliance so our friends are waiting many of them have said it it is a pendex can you name what is the another name for it another name for it so it is one of the appliances that is used for expansion as well as the distalization so it is called as hiller's pendulum appliance yes good shraba it is called as halite pendulum appliance what is this another uh, favorable question in pedo or in ortho you may get so why it is used it is a blue grass appliance who has given this i put the answer also there if you notice it <laughs> it is called as haskell appliance it are this rings with balls for tongue tongue thrusting habit is an exercise for tongue thrusting habit either in the anterior end or the posterior and so it is called as haskell appliance for tongue thrust you can easily identify this appliance if the rings are present what is this why is this used for first of all this is called as w appliance as the name says why it is used for yes but he has not given expansion of the arch 
it is used only to treat the posterior cross bites that too in uh, early permanent dentition or late mixed dentition it is a fixed type of one yes very good once they are given what is the purpose of this before that in 2017 or after that 2019 they asked to identify the appliance so this is your w arch appliance this is directly taken from profit so some of the appliances which are closed ribbon lines uh, i'm searching from profit and get it this crozet appliance if you can see that instead of it is standing towards parietal area it is projecting towards the tongue surface it is also used for expansion just like your coffin spring instead of facing the parietal parallel to parietal it is lying it is trying to control the tongue and when it expands the spring expands it expands the palatal then this gets corrected can i this is crozet appliance where you can see in upper and lower arch <clears throat> while you have it has a molar uses uh, some finger spring like things if you can see the difference between uh, so there are no finger springs in uh, the clear w shape arch only it is given in maxillary arch whereas your crozet arch with the help of finger springs and this transverse connector is perpendicular to the palate instead of parallel of course any type of slow maxillary expansion whether it's given in maxillary or mandibular arch is called as swords plate don't confuse your simple howl appliance which is used a slow maxillary expansion and a removable one is called as your swords plate your swords plate a split plate swords plate anything okay you try to remember between crozet appliance and the w appliance because once w appliance is there there are chances of giving the crozet appliance uh, little bit points will go little bit of deep shall i stop or can i take it takes half an hour of time shall i have another session or uh, can i complete this are you okay for me it's no problem i'm still energetic yes 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 then okay okay and uh, a little bit going to the questions which are given uh, fixed functional appliance fixed appliances so what is the t is the ligature this is given here so this is nothing but sliding mechanism in fixed appliances we try to retract the tooth either by springs or by sliding the wire along the brackets or moving the teeth with the wire if we move with the wire with loops it is called as non sliding mechanics or frictionless mechanics or loop mechanics if we slide the wire it is called as sliding mechanics since we are sliding it there will be friction it is called as frictional methods so here they have given what is this uh, is active french tie lace back tie active tie back or passive tie back so first we go to small so this also once they are given this is a metallic ligature tire just i'm trying to cover small few my points this is called as preformed metallic ligature tire usually made with uh, all ligature wires are made with 0.09 to 0.12 most inch most commonly used point 09 the preformed metal point 09 is called as kobayashi ties kobayashi ties they are called remember that this is called as kobayashi ties and you have elastomeric ligatures here so the tie backs if they are not having any module they are called as passive lace backs instead of tie backs we call it as lace backs usually to prevent the tipping of the anterior teeth they do not actually drive the teeth posteriorly they hold the anterior teeth in such cases you call it as lace back you call it as simply lace back or passive tie back and if a module is given if the module is given it actively pushes pulls the pushes the teeth if the module is given in the molar region it is called as 
type 1 active type back it tries to pull the anterior teeth towards the molar region if the active module is given in the canine region it tries to protract the molar forward this is type 2 so a mesial module is type 2 and a distal module is a type 1 the distal module type 1 tries to move the canine back a mesial module given in the anterior end of the canine tries to protract the molar okay So this is what it is given in the molar area. It is nothing but since module is given, it is an active type back. So it is given in the molar region. It is a type one active type back trying to retract the anterior teeth. Yes, can I distally good. So if you can see these styles, this is figure of eight type. It is called figure of eight means it looks like eight. In between figure of eight type, the wire is twisted. It is called as the French type. French type is called if it is twisted. Okay. And remember uh, instruments, uh, you have to remember this is instrument for forming the ligature types and this pin and ligature cutter. It appears as a small cutter, but not that much size of peaks. It is my nature form of your wire cutter, what we use in our daily practice. This is called as pin and uh, ligature cutter. So this is how it looks like. Instruments also, for the every alternate exam from 2019, much earlier than 2017, it seems each exam is having for identification of one uh, appliance, or uh, this means instrument. So this is what is called as friction mechanics. So the wire is sliding on the brackets. Either you use a closed coil spring, you can use an elastics, whether removable or fixed elastics or e-chain, all this comes under the friction mechanics or sliding mechanics. Remember this, just. And when you use a loop, what is this loop? What is that loop shown in the diagram? Usually K loop is not given in the upper arch. It is given in the loop. It is given in the upper arch. Here upper arch, you give is T loop. This is normal teardrop loop. Yes, peer loop or teardrop loop. Why I'm asking this question is this is repeated. That are called as frictionless mechanics. So what is the spring given here? What is it looking like? Yes, yes, yes. So you are thorough with the questions. So why this is called friction mechanics means the wire here, no? I am trying to move either canine. If I tie from canine to canine, whole anterior segment is made to slide on the wire. Arch remains stable. The teeth moves, the bracket moves on the wire. So that is why it is called as sliding mechanics. Since it is sliding, whenever two bodies slide over there, there is friction involved in it. That is why it is called as friction mechanics. You understand this? Now, Another one is, it is moving along the wire and loop mechanics, it moves with the wire. You have done removable appliances, some uh, loops. This is nothing but your closed coil spring. So you make it a closed coil spring, you pull the wire back and you make it to open. What this does, it tries to close back. So in closing back, it is bringing the tooth along with the wire not the tooth moves on the wire, the tooth moves along with the wire. So this is called as frictionless mechanics or loop mechanics. Am I clear now? Yes, okay, thank you. So 
So again, there are two things in uh, friction or lift. If I use from molar to molar, it is called uh, complete arc fire. If I use only in parts of segments, it is called as segmental. If it is from molar to molar, either it may be in sliding or uh, this thing, it is called as continuous mechanics. If I use only one part of mechanics, one part, if I segregate my posterior and anterior and try to pull it, it is called as uh, uh, sectional methods. So this is uh, K loop mechanics. Why it is called K loop? So this is also an uh, open coil spring. So a open coil spring made is like that and it is placed in closed position. It tries to push the dish teeth and less teeth outside. So what it functions, what it helps to do? It is called as Talra spring or K. It is given by Yes, for separation, to put it in other words, it is given to distalize the molar. So why we want? We want space. There are different methods of gaining space. So this case spring tries to move the molar backwards. So it is made up of uh, TMA wire. So another spring given by Kalrasar is KSR loop. So remember this shape. It is like teardrop, but crossover is there. So K sir means Kalra, sir means simultaneous intrusion and retrusion. These are the common springs which we use. Is it clear? I wonder some of your friends are still joining and some of remaining. Uh, feeling hungry and leaving. Anyhow, it is just 15 to 20 minutes. Now, this is what is I am calling about sectional, sectional mechanics. So what type of sectional mechanics? Is it frictional or uh, sliding mechanics? What is that here used for? No, I am using spring. When I am using spring means non-sliding, non-frictional, non-frictional. Uh, you didn't get the concept. Should I repeat again? So here, I close the coil and make it to open. So when the coil closes, it brings the teeth along with it itself. So it is called as frictionless or non-sliding, now friction, non-sliding or loop mechanics, loop mechanics. Since I am using a part of the arch, See, if you can see that my wire is not running from this small R to that small R, it is running up to the canine. It is called as segmental, segmental mechanics. If it runs from this side to that side as a continuous wire, it is called as continuous mechanics. Now, this is, when I give a loop, it is a loop mechanics or non-sliding mechanics. This also given once. What is this loop they have given? It is very easy to identify. Now we can clearly see what I am talking about sectional. Here I have made it a sectional wire. From canine to canine, one wire. And if I move canine to wine, canine to canine, I retract. It is called as NMOS retraction. NMOS retraction of anterior teeth. If I retract only canines, it is canine retraction followed by retraction of your incisors. So anyhow, if I use a loop, simply remember, if I use a loop, it is a frictionless mechanics or it is a non-sliding mechanics. No, 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 no. Non-sliding and frictionless and loop are same. Sliding and frictional mechanics are same. Non-sliding, yes. When there is no sliding, no friction. I'm trying to close by loops. It is a loop mechanic. Loop mechanics, non-sliding, non-friction are one and the same. On the other hand, the friction mechanics and sliding mechanics. Okay? Depending upon how many segments I made use of my entire art, it may be a continuous. So both in sliding and non-sliding mechanics, it may be a continuous wire or it may be a non-continuous. And depending upon the type of the space closure, Either I can retract canine only followed by 
the incisors or i can retract n mass from canine to canine back yes you can use any method frictionless method or what is the difference between a tongue crib and a tongue spike first of all it is a removal or a fixed one yes it is a removal one so is a tongue crib or it is a spike okay so somebody are asking about uh, so these are the two appliances which are used for the nasal or molding or pre surgical orthodontic pre surgical orthopedics in cleft lip pen palate patients so one is with screw man is with nasal stents so the latham appliance is used for uh, popular for expanding and aligning the maxillary sphincter it is a pin retained uh, devices it is uh, difficult to adjust for the patient but we can manipulate uh, the maxillary segments easily but if in the case is in the mid of the arch and this is nasal alveolar molding pnme is called as grayson nasal alveolar molding it has nasal stent it has no what i call it as a screw it is retained with the help of tapes okay and it is called as uh, appliance what we are talking about it is called as a crib so this is why i am calling it as uh, whether you call it as a uh, tongue crib or spike spikes are uh, little bit uh, aggressive they cause injury to the patient so spikes they hurt you also so remember this is called as herek device no nothing is punishable like this all these are called as reminder appliances how severe is your uh, tongue thrust you give this appliances so what is called what is the function of all these appliances is to make an engram in the brain so that the patient uh, won't get the tongue uh, outside when it gets it should hurt it is a reminder appliance and the more aggressive the reminder will be the more the patient will remember so he tries to stop this habit either it may be in uh, a uh, this thing uh, tongue thrusting or it may be a habit breaking appliance like you were a thumb sucking usually this is given for thumb sucking so it is like a punishing appliance we may or may not use punishing appliance okay in severe tongue thrust you given but remember that it causes bleeding so maximum you should avoid giving this uh, appliance rakes these are called as rakes so this we have discussed blue grace appliance it can be even thumb sucking tongue thrusting anything you can give which creates an uh, exercise for your tongue muscles thus again uh, one more appliance so it is removable or fixed it is very clear is it uh, removable or it is a removable or it is fixed you can you see bands here tongue thrusting habit breaking appliance the token seems to be same as here thrust habit okay again it is a crib not it is an spike so this you can easily identify this also given yes cheek retractor yes 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 no problem oh these are the questions uh, you got so two things uh, which are used for measuring the force one is the corex which is uh, this thing this is dontric gauss or dynamometer dental dynamometer these are used for gauging the 
amount of uh, force either with springs or uh, elastics what we apply these questions both are given in uh, previous entrances remember thing dantrix gauze is a piston like mechanism whereas corex is a dial like uh, mechanism so this which we have already discussed so since the labial pads are present on the upper arch this is used for expansion of the upper arch or for growth of the upper arch we need growth of the upper arch when there is restricted maxillary growth and maxillary growth is restricted in a class 3 condition and of course your prankel 3 is given in a class 3 condition so another question which we are expecting i have put it in another words what is the wire that exhibits the difference between uh, the loading and unloading curves first of all what is this called difference between loading and unloading what is the name given to it if there is difference between loading yes dr madhulika has answered it it is called as hysteresis remember this very important point it is exhibited by the nitinol wire nitinol wire or nitai wire it is called as hysteresis the difference between the what is this this also given once yes boon scotch why it is used boon scotch the boon scotch is used for you can see the measurements so it is used how far from the incisal tip the brackets are kept in a straight wire technique they are used bracket position measurement so this is this is also called one of uh, it is used particularly in mbt technique so both sides you have marking 3.54 4.55 like that this is used for mbt technique mbt is a form of uh, straight wire technique recently used whereas this can be used for your edge wise or any type of straight wise both these two are bracket placement measuring not they are, they are not bracket placement instrument they are measuring the height of bracket placement bracket position measurement instruments be careful why i am telling this sometimes you may give an option of bracket placement they are not used for placement of bracket they are used for placement measuring after placement they are measuring for measuring so what is this you can expect this definitely will get this time this question what is this yes dr ayesha is uh, up to the knowledge yes intramaximal stripper so already you have been trained yes some noise there yes it is a proximal stripper and each blade uh, represents the amount of thickness and the clearance can be checked check by leaves here this is your orthodontic intraproximal stripper very good that that's why i am question what is this instrument now you got the point why i am telling for placement of brackets for placement of bands for removing bands for removing brackets yes it is a bracket placing instrument it has serrated apparent after placing the brackets with this instrument you measure with a bracket measurement like a device for boon skulls and you adjust accordingly and cure with light curing so another question you may get uh, so band seater and band six sorry it has come here oh i will change it what is this instrument instrument here instrument shown here yes it is a tweets instrument so these things why you should get familiar tweets instrument it has two beaks which are flat the tweets beak instrument Tweets plier is used for applying torque. They have to use it in two, not one. They have to use it in two. A set, a pair of instruments to be used to to produce the torque. So this is called as tweets torquing plier. Exact name is 
स्पीड स्टॉर्किंग प्लेयर नो सम ऑफ योर फ्रेंड्स आर स्टिल ज्वाइनिंग आफ्टर देयर डिनर so you know angst player and uh, adverb player you can easily identify them so debonding player and de banding player for de banding player you can see a round rubber tip is there to remove the bands for the de bonding to remove the brackets a sharp edges at the tips may be present and pointing towards each other this is bracket removing player or debonding player whereas this is band removing player or your removal of bands you can see the round uh, safety tip there and the hoe player or band seating players these are called band seating player you can see serrated appearances they are called as hoe players they are used for seating the player they have curved and straight straight is used for upper and the curved is used for lower arch and this is band pusher for it this has come there this is bite seater a toothbrush like thing for seating the bands this also once you got this question bite stick or bite pusher this is band pusher which is your like your uh, elevator used in our uh, oral surgery department a serrated To push the bands in between the contact points, whereas a bite sitter, if not gone inside properly, we ask the patient to bite on the this band bite. This is called as band biter or band sitter. This is called as band pusher. so distal end cutter you can expect this also this is 90 degrees can you see here the big saw 90 degrees to the shank and a cutting tip pet there this is used for cutting the distal ends of the wire after we place the wire it can be used for both end uh, rectangle wires and of course what are these appliances you may be better knowing nowadays yes they can be sxr they can be invisalign or they can be aligner therapy clear aligner therapy anything anything you can easily identify so for invisalign the forerunner is the sx retainer yes or the aesthetic retainers they are called so another thing on deep some entrances Sir, AMS and PJ, those who are preparing for AMS and PJ, you may expect this. You go through this in uh, the profit. They have given hierarchy. That means which is more stable, predictable, and which is less stable. They have given in uh, things. See this from short to up. So the mandible bringing forward is easier than pushing it back. so this is called as hierarchy of oral surgery it is given in um, world entrances also they are not given a picture based question but there are chances they may ask a b c d which one is first which one is last so more stable is the maxilla can be brought up mandible can be forward chin be corrected any direction but bringing the mandible backward because it interferes with the function of the tongue and also the muscles of mastication and maxilla down also it closes the oral space so what all that widens the oral cavity space are easy to retain remember simply this it may be maxilla up or mandible forward so just simply mug up this thing and uh, 
this also you can find in the recent example. So you know oh, three discrepancies of envelope, three envelopes of discrepancy. See, can you see here a green one? What is that uh, envelope of discrepancy? One, two, three, four. But we know only three. What is the fourth one? One is by orthodontic treatment. One is by orthopedic, orthodontic, or by functional appliances. One is by your orthognatic surgery. What is this green one? What is this green one of envelope discrepancy? Can you guess? We have discussed it already. No, it is not pilcodontics. So it is stats, your skeletal anchorage or temporary anchorage devices. Remember this, this question you may expect, TAD or skeletal anchorage. So this one has recently added, this is uh, rough in, sir, because there is no proper literature support, but all the cases have shown that there is a range where which cannot be treated just by orthodontic treatment or which do not exactly require a surgery can be treated by the skeletal anchorage or TATS. What is this appliance? What is the procedure shown below? SARPE, MARPE, HIRAX, RME or SME? Stop answering, feeling hungry. Yes, 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 yes. It is Marpe. It is Marpe. You can see here the mini implants. Mini implant assisted rapid palatal expansion. It is not Hyrax RME. Just it is not a simple. It is RME. Of course, it is assisted by the micro mini implants or micro implants. It's Marpe. You can expect this question also. It can be again. Uh, purely uh, tissue bone or bone burn. Now here seen is hybrid. It is bone burn by micro implants and it is supported on the tooth also. It is bone tooth supported and the bone burn. For some things, it will be only bone burn. So what are these brackets called? SL brackets, pipette brackets, standard edge brackets and back brackets. So it, uh, you should be expect question from on this. Since this has a shutter like thing, it doesn't require any ligation process. So this is called as self ligator. Only just pushing the lid or flip it is called as self ligation brackets. You may expect this question. Okay, I think it is uh, time for our dinner. Any questions? These are the some of the questions which I try to cover and not gone much uh, deep, which is not at all uh, required. What do you want actually in mean theory of retention means? Yes, loops are used in frictionless method. Loop method or frictionless method or non-sliding method it is called. So matrix rotation is a complex subject. Uh, we'll discuss at uh, another point of time. Uh, there is no fixed terminology in using it. Rotations, rotations of the mandible to the maxible. One is the direct rotation of, if we measure the lower border of the mandible to the skull, it is called as total matrix or intramatrix depending upon the examiner. Sometimes what happens is when this mandible is rotating, there occurs changes within the mandible itself. So example, this is called as core. This is called as symphysis. This is called as gonion. And this is base of the mandible. The resorption and absorption occurs within this uh, mandibular bone may produce relative changes of the line, the mandibular line to the line of cranial line. These changes are called within the mandible 
occurring changes that is called as sometimes intra matrix within the matrix or depending upon the uh, terminology what the author uses so one thing is the rotations occurring within the mandible that appears to outside and one is the real one that occurs in the core relative to the cranium the terminology difference interrupted headgear so headgear is both interrupted and uh, intermittent if anything you remove it becomes intermittent but if you keep and apply the force if it goes on decreasing and reaches the zero it is interrupted how you use depends so you take a removable appliance you take a removable appliance and uh, just put 1 mm of expansion and put in the mouth so it expands from highest force to the sudden of all of a sudden after expansion is created there will be zero force so same thing if you remove the if you use it as a removable type and remove it there will be no force at all if the same one if you use fixed and start then it becomes an interruptive force interruptive and intermittent is nothing but depending upon how you are going to use the appliance not based on the force system based on the force system you have to continuous and interruptive a continuous force is one only their partial decay of the initial force and before the initial force becomes zero you will activate it whereas in interruptive forces you wait till it becomes zero and activate it that's the difference elastics how you use it depends elastics also will come from high level to that's what i am discussing high level to zero it comes when it comes to zero how you are using elastics it doesn't mean uh, elastic simply you cannot put it as an uh, interrupted forces or intermediate or continuous forces usually elastics they won't decay to the zero they won't decay to the zero because and they become zero you will remove it and put another one so it is i say it's continuous force not that much of heavy forces it uh, apply how much of force you are applying initial also decide whether it is a, a continuous force or uh, an interrupted force but remember when you apply continuous forces it should be a gentle small forces and it should not be an heavy interrupted forces that the difference any doubts there are no such important uh, topics there is uh, one and a half month of time still I think everything is important in need basic concepts are uh, good no thanks i am expecting questions from you no questions mean either you have understood wholly or i have not understood anything two things i used to tell my undergraduate students always shall i take leave thank you all all the best okay. wish you all the best hope to see you good get good free ranks that means uh, good ranks joining all government colleges all of you thank you all